Hello and welcome to the video. This is a slightly different environment. This is the new offices of 3DXR. This is one of the build floors here where they build large scale UAVs. Now I managed to get up here about once every two months and it allows me to have a look around and look at some of the latest and greatest technology. And that's really interesting because a lot of the innovation that comes into the very expensive high end stuff that Ben and the others here play with eventually makes it down into the hobby. So it kind of gives you a view of the stuff that's on the way. However, this time, as usual, we were talking about stuff and Ben was showing me some of the new stuff that's come in. Some things from people like Maytech, Radio Master, Free Sky, as well as people like Siri with some of the gimbals. So I said, OK, can we just lay this out and get some footage of this? Because I'm sure other people will be interested, too. So if you like some of the higher end stuff or maybe you're just in the hobby and you just wondered what some of the latest technology is, let's have a look. OK, so we've got some uh, new products from Matek here. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is something uh, we had a demand for and need for ourselves and we've had Matek made and generally released this product. So what this is, this is a, a CAN device and it's a compass only, so it's an RM3100 compass. And the reason why we needed something like this is quite common on either large vehicles or even compact vehicles. Um, magnetic interference can be an issue and it, it can often be quite hard to, to find a place for the normal compass GPS module on one. So this is just a compass module and it can be mounted sort of anywhere on your vehicle. One of the benefits of it being CAN is that this length of wire can be quite long, um, unlike the traditional I2C or sort of serial connected devices. So, and you can also daisy chain the CAN connections. So this is a very compact, um, easy to mount, can simply be bolted down. In my opinion, the best sort of compass on the market at the moment, the RM3100, and a good solution to many people's problems on large VTOLs, VTOLs or compact copters is the ability to, to be able to mount this external compass. So yeah, like I say, this, this was a, a product that we sort of had commissioned from Matek and it is on general release, so anybody can buy this now. And, and we use this quite a lot on our large VTOLs um, and also some of our quads where mounting um, traditional compasses in GPS has been problematic. So here's a, another nice little product from Matek, also can. Um, and this is a, a current and voltage sensing module, exceptionally light. It'll uh, take voltage up to 85 volts and handle currents up to 180 amps. So this could easily be retrofitted. Um, it could even be used as, you know, second, third battery monitor um, on a vehicle. And it's just a simple way to add in that current and voltage sensing, which can be used, obviously, for your normal fail-safe events of low battery current warnings um, and also it's used quite a lot now in the tuning process to have accurate current readings um, and accurate voltage readings in order to scale tuning so this is an easy way to add that voltage and current sensing um, up to quite high values uh, again being can we can also have quite long wires between the position of the sensor back to your flight controller so yeah another nice lightweight low cost sensor there from Matek this month, we've also got a few new products from Hollybro. So their popular F9P range of GPSs has now um, an improvement to make them CAN. So here we have the F9P Rover, and this is a CAN connection, so the four wires. They've also done a little bit of redesign on the case here, um, antenna, antenna improvement. If we compared it to the, the older one, the F9P, um, here the Rover Lite, um, which had either a 6-pin or a 10-pin cable, depending if it was GPS 1 or 2. Um, you'll see the case has changed in shape a little bit. Uh, we also have these nice mounting holes, so I'm, I'm a great fan of being able to bolt something down so it's not coming off. Um, so yeah, another, another great product here from Hollybro, the Drone Can F9P. In the same family of um, GPS, we have the very popular um, F9P with the helical antenna. This has also been upgraded to CAN connection. Um, what you should note on here, if you're a user of the previous model, is the mounting for the antenna has changed to from the top. Previously, you would mount it approximately here. What I have also added is some new mounting holes. So again, this can be bolted to a GPS stand. So there's a new GPS stand to match this, and it can be fixed. For those of you who um, had the antenna, say, on 
the top of the fixed wing and had the, the receiver further down. You can still add the SMA cable and mount, mount it how you wish. Again, can so you can have longer cables between the device and the flight controller. All the things we've just looked at um, are CAN bus. So we've had the compass module, voltage and current sensor, and these, this new family of GPS um, are all CAN based, which is where more and more items are going. And you might have seen in some of the previous videos where we've recommended if you use multiple CAN devices or if you have extremely long wires, you need to compensate for, say, voltage sag um, and not having enough power to run multiple devices. So previously I've recommended you, you inject, you know, five volts into the, the CAN circuit. What we've got here now is this beautiful product from Hollybro. Basically, we connect the, the single cable to our flight controller. This splits out to connect four devices, but it also manages the power. So this provides the five volts and up to three amps across the whole devices. What's really nice about this is the wide voltage input. So you can see here from two to 12 S, I can use this on almost every drone I do. I would recommend people use this if you go beyond the sort of single GPS into your flight controller where voltage sag could be an issue and not having enough current to power these devices. Um, easy to mount, nice aluminium case, just bolt the thing down, um, very neat solution to power management when you're using multiple CAN devices. Now we're going to have a look at some of our uh, radio selections, some of these new in this month. Uh, we're stocking a large range of current FreeSky models. One of my personal favourites is the X18SE. This one's in uh, red. We have other colours and other models available on the website. Uh, the SE here has the improved gimbals. What this nice big color screen, just a great, you know, great feeling in hand for me, this particular radio. They come with uh, the built-in batteries now. You've got the smaller module. You can add external antennas. The standard antennas are built in here. I just find this my go-to radio. Um, also from FreeSky, the twin. So I'm not a big FPV person, but I could see me using this on uh, small quads push-up screen. Both these radios run EFOS. Um, I also personally like to run, if I'm using Pilot, the Yapu script. So that's available on all these FreeSky radios now. This one has just a really nice feel in the hands. Nice gimbals here, really sort of sturdy feeling. Just enough switches and a, a nice small radio, very portable. It's quite a, quite a fan of that now. So that's our, um, some sample of our FreeSky products. Here's a sample of some of the radios we've got back in from Radio Master. So the new Boxer radio. This is a nice compact radio. It's got a great feel in the hand, this. Quite quite nice. Just enough stuff. Um, it is the black and white screen, but I think that's quite appropriate on this radio. I, I quite find this as a, a good sort of go-to radio. And with a lot of the stuff I do where I have highly autonomous drones, I often need a remote that's just a, a safety remote or it's a remote that's used for take off and landing so it doesn't need to be too elaborate so this is you know quite powerful it's got all the features i need um in audio pilot if i want my six flight modes i can do it by your buttons i can do it by your multiple switches i've got a dial for tuning and speed so yeah it's kind of got everything i need in a nice package and it fits really nicely uh, in the hand a little strap included you've got a couple of options now of batteries from radio master you've got the lithium ions and also the lithium polymers um, so yeah, quite quite a nice little radio I'm grown to like. We've got the full range of TX16's Mark II in, so all the different gimbal options um, with the AGO1's and the, the, the improved gimbals. Uh, a few different colour options as well, carbon and red. So again, this is a, a fantastic value for money radio in the TX16 Mark II. We've also gotten a few more cameras from SEER. Previously, you may have seen the A8 Mini on one of these videos. So this is a small free axis gimbal. Uh, a new model is the A2 Mini. So single axis gimbal encased. Um, now, what I would say about these gimbals is they, we, we do say this sort of for ad advanced users, they plug and play with their own range of radios and apps. Uh, you can use them with other devices. They are predominantly IP based systems. So I would suggest that if you are looking at these cameras, you do understand from the manual and what's, what these cameras can do and what you may need a bit more knowledge about or research about to make them work with other systems. There's another camera here as well, 
this is their Beast ZR30. So this is a camera aimed at, say, inspection. It has 30 times optical zoom, and what they call a hybrid zoom, so combining this optical and digital zoom, goes up to 180 times. Now, to me, this is a, an inspection gimbal where you need to have a good standoff distance to the subject. So, for example, power line inspection. It's a nice small form factor for such a high zoom value. Again, IP-based cameras, plug and play with the SEER um, controllers and apps, but you may need to um, a little bit of sort of knowledge around IP systems to make them work with other products. So great free access stabilized high zoom 4K camera. One great feature with all of these gimbals is you can actually use them inverted and upside down. So this could mean some of these small little cameras now can be used on top of a rover, a boat. So it's just a nice little feature that you can go traditional uh, belly down or inverted and they will work in both uh, orientations. Big thank you to Ben for taking us through that. Hopefully that was interesting, whether or not you're a professional or a hobbyist like me. Uh, I put links down below to some of this stuff, but the 3DXR website is a very handy place to go to if you're struggling to find something in particular. They carry most of the main brands now that we use in the hobby. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.